Hey everyone, great to be back with you all again. So I understand that not as many people will have heard of this game before, and some may not even know what type of game it is. Well, no worries, as I'll take you through it. I remember first seeing Power Quest in a local Kmart of mine, looking at the game's cover, which looked like some kind of Mega Man-esque thing, and just having to see what the heck was going on there. I finally went back to it recently so we could talk about just what it was I experienced then, and what it's like to experience it all now. So strap in, and let's see just what Power Quest for the Game Boy Color is all about. Developed by Japan System Supply and released in November of 1998 for the Game Boy in Japan, and December of 1998 for the Game Boy Color in the US, Power Quest is a 2D fighting game with RPG elements. Surprised? If you looked at the game's cover artwork and even this intro movie, and thought that you were going to see some kind of Mega Man clone, I can't say I blame you. This game's art style pretty much screams Mega Man to the point where it feels like the only thing missing is the Capcom logo to certify it. But no, this is a 2D fighter. Now you're probably thinking the game's premise must involve some kind of post-apocalyptic world set in the future where robots have to fight for some form of dominance, yes? Well, that would be a good guess, but you'd still be wrong. No, this game is about... Model Robots. Yes, every character you can play as in this title is actually... A model. Model robot fighting is the latest craze, and everyone in town wants in on it, including the game's main character, a silent and nameless protagonist with a best friend named Lewis. Unfortunately, your allowance doesn't cover the price of one of these models, but lo and behold, it turns out that you've won a model contest that you conveniently entered before the game even started, and can pick one model of your choosing. Huzzah! After choosing your first Pokemon, ahem, <clears throat> model, you begin to wander around town and fight with other kids and adults with models of their own in one-on-one -on -one fights while waiting for a big tournament to start. But there's a little more to this than just fighting. It turns out the game has some role-playing game aspects to it as well. Winning battles awards you with money, which you bring to the local shop. There, you can buy new moves to enhance your character. The game's structure is pretty simple. You walk around a small overworld map and go to the different parts of town, finding new people to battle with. As you do this more and go to the right locations, the game's story begins to slowly unfold. These events range from helping the local kids against an evil gang called the Bad Hyena Gang, to winning the local tournaments and trying to become the best model robot fighter in the world. As you progress through the story, enhanced versions of your moves will become available all the way up to level 3. There are also special level 4 parts hidden in one area, but we'll talk more about that later. The game also implements a password system, meaning you won't be able to save your progress, unfortunately. Hope you've got a pencil ready. Or a computer. So let's talk more about the fighting itself. Aside from moving up, down, left, and right with your D-pad, your A button performs a slow but powerful attack, while the B button performs a fast but weaker blow. The back button is also your block, as is down and back for blocking the lower hits. Using A and B in combination with the D-pad allows for multiple combination types and counters. It's... decent. While it's far from what I'd call bad or unplayable, I don't think it's necessarily much to write home about either. And don't get me wrong, I know you can only do so much with the Game Boy Color's limited range of buttons to begin with, as the shoulder buttons didn't come along until the Game Boy Advance. In fact, outside of Mortal Kombat 4 and Street Fighter Alpha, I can't even think of a single fighter on the Game Boy Color to compare it to, and I'm sure the limited amount of buttons played a hand in that. I will say that the fight controls are mostly effective, considering the limitations of the hardware, and that I think they do more good than bad here. Being able to pull off special moves after you unlock them is also pretty satisfying. Certain moves, like Axe's down kick here, can make the combat feel a little broken in places, but all of these moves can be worked around. There are five models to choose from with their own styles of fighting. Max relies on heavy punches, Speed relies on fast kicks, Gong is slow but strong, and Lawn is fast but weaker. There is also a bonus character simply called Borat, which is the weakest in the game, and mainly there to serve as a plot device in one specific scene. The music is also pretty catchy, despite you hearing the same handful of tunes again and again. It can definitely feel grating, but I don't blame the music itself for that. There are a lot of factors that can quickly sour the experience for those playing, though. Let's go into those now. There's really no kind way to say this, but the game is grindy as all heck. 
It'll take you a couple of hours to beat, but the majority of your time will be spent going to the exact same locations on the same small map and fighting the same people over and over again, collecting money until the game decides you're ready to move on to the next part of the story. That's right, you can't just progress the story whenever you feel like it. You'll have to fight in random battles a bunch of times and go from place to place until the game decides you've done enough of them and the next chunk of story decides to unfold itself. It is not a fun setup since you gain nothing but some money with every battle and is pretty much the textbook definition of artificially increasing a game's length. Imagine if you had to play Pokemon by continuing to fight the same bug catcher over and over again. That's what it's like. It also doesn't help that you can't even perform special attacks until the last tenth of the game or so, after a specific story event, making your grindy battles all the more frustrating to get through. And the story that's actually here is quite thin, so much so that I can easily fit it all into one small paragraph. After getting your model and fighting against the locals, you come across the Bad Hyena Gang, a group who tries to sabotage people's models and win through unfair methods. You defeat them after getting some special liquid put on your model by the store guy and defeat them. Then you build up to the local preliminary tournament and win. After that, you encounter a local girl who is determined to win at the nationals, and a martial artist who wants to test your skills and makes you fight him on top of a temple. After this, you find out your best friend Louis has to move, and he leaves you crying after having one more battle together. Then the national tournament comes up where you face some old foes and a new person for the final round, and that's it. You're the best in the world, and that's it. Game over. Not much of a story, huh? It's a shame, because I think this premise at least had some potential, but the negatives really weigh it down. As I said before, everything happens on one small map. More than nine-tenths of your playthrough will involve grinding and wandering around until you figure out what you're supposed to do next, and the story is extremely light on any content. Aside from progressing the story as normal, the only additional things I was able to find was this hidden spot with $5,000 in it, and learning that battling the scientist can potentially earn you the level 4 parts near the end of the game. They only appear at random when you win against him though, and he happens to be one of the two hardest fights in the entire game. And as for the hardest? Well, that's the final boss Don Quixote, by far. After winning all three major fights in the national tournament, this guy appears as the real final challenge, and seems to use the same model as the one you selected for this fight. The game suddenly goes from tough but manageable, to SNK boss syndrome levels of ridiculousness. The AI for this fight seems to have a counterattack plan for every single button you press, and actually prevented me from finishing the game for almost an hour. It doesn't help that losing to him causes you to have to restart the tournament from the beginning either. I finally managed to take him down by spamming my air spin attack every time he'd knock me onto the ground. Not since Geese Howard in the original Fatal Fury games have I had to do something game-breaking like that. The positives are also clearly there. For the limited number of buttons you're given, it's not actually a bad fight system at all, and is more than playable. There's also a 1-2 player option where you can choose to fight CPU opponents in a sort of survival mode style, or play against a friend with a link cable. This is also a great way to try out each of the different characters and decide which one you want to play as the most. And while I didn't care much for the look of the environments and main characters, I did like the look of the model robots and the arenas that they would fight in. I only wish there were more of these things. Thankfully, if you ever decide you want to try a different model in the story mode, the game will allow you to switch it out at the store and keep all the parts you bought with it. And when you think about the amount of grinding you already have to do in this game, you'll realize this is basically a godsend. And despite the lack of story, I actually did enjoy the segment where your best friend Lewis announced that he was moving, as it did manage to carry some emotional weight to it and raise the stakes in the final tournament battle, even if just a little. But this game will rightfully be a tough sell for many. None of its gameplay or story factors make it stand out from other games of its type, and the other negatives I mentioned above will prevent many from ever finishing it, let alone ever wanting to. If you're curious enough, you could certainly do a lot worse than this. But I don't expect many to be singing it praises from the rooftops either. In the end, I suppose my opinion on this is an okay one at best. It's not a bad game, and I was surprised at the actual premise of this title after being fooled by the misleading box art, and even appreciated the attempts to meld fighting and RPG gameplay into one title. But there are far too many other factors that hold it back from greatness. The game's artificial length, unforgivable amount of grinding, and lack of major story elements really made this more frustrating to get through than it should have been. 
If you're curious enough and manage to find it for under $10 somewhere, then I think you might get your money's worth, but keep in mind this is a very specific type of game for a very specific type of audience, and even then you may find it too repetitive and draining to reach the end of. Approach with caution, and for God's sake, don't go into this hoping it'll be another Mega Man game. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have you played this game before yourself? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're feeling generous, please consider donating to my Patreon, where awesome people like Brandon, Tomari, Johan, Cielo, Andrew, and Jonathan all help to keep this channel going. Until next time. This cover just makes me want to play Mega Man, though. That's it. That's it. I'm going to play Mega Man now. It just makes me want to go do that. So I will.